Does your e-commerce business need a written information security policy? Hi, I'm Patty Sharp, CPA and partner at Acuity. And today I'm going to continue my series on cybersecurity, talking about what a WISP is and whether or not you need one. Who needs a WISP? Now, I will preface this by saying I'm not an attorney, I'm not a cybersecurity specialist. So if you want actual specific information about your situation, make sure you go talk to your own attorney. But I will tell you that there are only 16 states that do not have some kind of cybersecurity regulations in place. So it's probably a good idea to go check that out. Also, if you have cybersecurity insurance, some of those policies will they, they require to have some kind of written security policy in place. And if you don't have that and it requires it, it would really suck to just be paying those premiums every month and then have something actually happen. And then you file a claim and they reject it because you weren't following, following the rules of having that type of coverage. Okay. Um, the last thing I will say also, even if your state doesn't require cybersecurity safeguards and things like that. You might have to have a WISP because you might be in a particular industry that requires it. So if you are subject to any HIPAA requirements, you're going to need this. If you're a tax preparer, which e-commerce businesses are not, but if you were, um, if you're like having your taxes filed, make sure that your tax preparer has a WISP in place. These are required by the IRS and it'll, it'll give you some peace of mind. Um, the last thing I'm going to say about that is even if it's not required to have a WISP, there might be some good reasons for actually having one. And I'm going to talk about that as we go through this video. One of the main points of having the WISP in place is to outline the safeguards that you have in place for your business. These are usually broken down into three different categories, administrative, physical, and technical. First up is administrative safeguards. So this is going to be everything that's administrative in nature. So things like where is your data stored? Who has access? How are you limiting access to just the key people who need it? It's going to cover things like if there is an incident, how that incident is dealt with. So as we were building our WISP, we also built out standard operating procedures and we use Process Street for that. You can go check out this video here where I talk about Process Street and it gives us step by step plan for what we do in case there's ever an incident, who gets notified, what level of review and approval, who needs to be contacted like experts outside of just acuity and all of that. It helps us think about what needs to be done before we're in an emergency situation where we have to deal with it. It also helps us identify ways that we can keep things secure by limiting access and that sort of thing so that we don't get into the, that kind of trouble if we can help it. Another section is going to be physical safeguards. So historically in traditional businesses, you might think of things like the security of file cabinets where you're keeping paper copies of W-2s and employee information, social security cards and or their numbers and things like that. Um, for an e-commerce business, you're probably going to be looking at things more like how do you safeguard USB if data is saved to a USB key or how if you have portable storage, what are your policies and procedures around having information there, destroying that information if it's no longer needed and that kind of thing. The last section is on technical safeguards. And I actually did a tip uh, like 12 tips for your cybersecurity protection kind of thing uh, a couple of weeks ago. You can go check that out here. And it's all about safeguarding your technology. So it's going to be things like encrypting your hardware, using VPNs, using two-factor authentication, password policies, and all of those kinds of just things that you would traditionally think about when you are protecting all of the data on an ongoing day-to-day -day basis. 
In addition to these sections on safeguarding data, you can also have other information in there, self-risk assessments, management involvement, um, notification protocols, um, secure record disposal, uh, how to assess third parties like independent contractors that you're working with and that kind of thing. So it's really an all-inclusive document that really discusses every different aspect of your business as it relates to confidential information that you're holding for customers. I think as a business owner too, it's going to be really valuable to have a document like this that just takes all of that information from all the different sources and put it all in one place. When we put ours together, it was a huge relief to just see everything, know the areas we needed to tackle, the priority of things that we needed to do. It gave us a way to communicate with not only the other people in the business, but specifically with employees who were handling customer information so that they understood what our policies were and all of that. So I highly recommend it to anybody who's going to do one. Um, be prepared. There, It can come with a pretty hefty price tag. So uh, just be aware of that going in. And I think that's it. I hope you like this video. If you did, please like, comment, and share. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll catch you later.